two, one. Hello, Pop Shop. Welcome to A Woman's World. I am Noelle, and this is our guest, Michelle Hanabusa. Would you like to just briefly introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Hanabusa. I Born and raised here in Los Angeles, and I'm a fourth generation uh, Japanese, Okinawan, American entrepreneur and dreamer. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, just to let everyone know, this is normally a panel, but we have this wonderful guest for this one-on-one -on -one scoop. <laughs> so, uh, normally on this panel, we feature women on the app, or just powerful women in general in our communities. And so, yeah, we're so excited to have you. So, thank you so much for being here with Yay. us. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. So, um, I guess, aside from your introductions, you can also briefly um, maybe speak about your identities and then also about your company? Yeah, um, about my identity. Well, um, you know, like I said, fourth generation Japanese Okinawan American. Um, I feel like that is something new that I've been saying. You know, for the longest time I was, I just identified myself as Japanese American. And mm -hmm. then before that I was like, trying to be just American, you yeah. know? And I think that was definitely a ongoing journey throughout like my youth and even right now. Mm -hmm. That's so relatable. <laughs> I remember me in, um, when I was in high school, I was just so aligned with my Filipino identity that I kind of rejected my American identity. And then when I got to college, I was like, oh man, I'm definitely Filipino American because that's just so different. Like, like Filipino American or Asian American in general is its own culture in itself. Yeah, no, I I totally feel that, and like, um, it's so interesting because like I've been reflecting so much within this past year, right? Like just being stuck at home, and you just have like a lot more bandwidth to just like think about things mm -hmm. and like why you did X Y Z when you were like growing up, right? And really just trying to figure out like when in my youth, I. I feel like I didn't really even have a voice or my own identity. I didn't right. give myself room to explore that because most of my identity was just to blend in and be accepted, mm -hmm. like around my peers. Right. Yeah, that's um, a very common, I feel like, Asian American struggle yeah. is like, especially like going to school and people being like weirded out by your food and like, like oh, that smells weird. And I'm like, Smells good to me. I, know, like, I love it. This is my favorite it's food so ever. Yummy. <laughs> you want some? Like no. You know, I'm like you're lost. I know. <laughs> but yeah, can you um, speak to us a little more about your company, Uprisers? Yeah. So Uprisers is a community-driven streetwear brand, mm -hmm. and we're really focused and rooted in telling authentic and impactful stories of the underrepresented. Awesome. And we do this through like clothing and storytelling. Mm -hmm. Oh, we love that. I honestly, um, I watch your Electric Pop interview. Uh, if you guys haven't already, uh, follow Electric Pop on YouTube. <laughs> I was about to say Instagram. I was like, no, that's There's not it. promos on. You're right, the promos, but at Pop Shop Live on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I was, I've literally like looked through your site and I was like, I need to cop something. And I'm like, oh my gosh, all the ones I really wanted were like sold out. Oh, I was I like, oh, we got to get that drop. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much. We have a really fun little icebreaker. So essentially, it's just a really quick, quick fire, this or that. Okay. Um, so at the top of your head, just choose one or the other. Okay. It's either your preference or something, how you identify yourself. Yes? Okay, ready? I think so. We got it. Quick fire. <laughs> Three, two, one. Ramen or pho? Uh, ramen. Ponytail or bun? Ah! Bun. Bun? <laughs> <laughs> sneakers or heels? Uh, sneakers. Introvert or extrovert? <sighs> I'm a mixture, but I think extrovert today. Extrovert today. <laughs> awesome. Uh, dumplings or bao? Dumplings. Designer or vintage? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I want to say vintage. Vintage? Yeah. Sweet or spicy? Spicy. Coachella or EDC? Coachella. Pastels or neutrals? Ooh. <laughs> neutrals. <laughs> neutrals. Uh, sushi or K barbecue? Oh my gosh, <laughs> K-Barbecue. K K-Barbecue. Text or I call? I know, I know. What? Text or call? Oh, uh, text for sure. Text. Cropped or oversized? Oversized. Oversized. Plants or pets? Ooh, these are so <laughs> hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, right now, because I don't have a pet, plants. Plants? Yeah. Uh, boba or coffee? Coffee. 
coffee, and then <laughs> anime or K drama. K drama. K drama. And yeah, ding 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 ding. Oh that's my our gosh, speed that round. That was so hard. <laughs> they're like that was equally fun, though. like yeah, oh. like they're like close. Yeah. I feel like for me, if I were having to like, if someone was just like answer these now, I'd be like <laughs> <laughs> just sweating. I know, like, sushi or K barbecue? I'm like, how can you ask? I me know. This? I feel like it depends on how you're feeling and like how bougie you feel. <laughs> I know. I know exactly. Like, do I want to eat a lot or do I want to eat like? I don't know. Also, one's hot, one's cold, so it's like it's so different, but like, oh, equally as good. Right. K barbecue. I'm not gonna lie. I actually had it uh, twice in a row within this past week. And <laughs> no so, shame in that. Yeah, I was like, oh, I have to pick that. No shame in that. I don't know. My favorite thing about K barbecue is the banchan. Yes. The sides oh. are like <laughs> amazing. So <laughs> thank you so much for playing that yeah, with me. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Um, so let's get. We're getting down to it. We're here for AAPI Heritage Month. So how has your upbringing and your Asian American identity um, influenced your work? Yeah, I think that's a really great question because, you know, when I started Uprisers, it was this ongoing journey to do my inner work mm -hmm. as well as um, create collections around voices from our community. Mm -hmm. So it was a really great way for not only for me to like really work and find my own voice and identity through like skill sets that I've like learned in my career, mm -hmm. um, but it was also a way for me to connect back to my roots that like that. I grew and have grown to like just really love. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, like I mentioned before, it was, it's, it's been an ongoing journey, right? And part of my culture of just rejecting that when in my youth. Right. And then, you know, I, I was taught and I was like, I, I, I grew up in that environment at home, but mm -hmm. then being part of kind of like the exterior trying to blend in with my peers, right. I like ignored all of the stuff that I would experience at home. And mm -hmm. so, I think just, you know, one day waking up and I was like, Michelle, like, things have to change, you mm. know, not only within myself, but like how we represent our work, like, right. externally. And so I think once I kind of started to really explore that, um, that's how like Uprisers really came to be like what it is today. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. How do you think your, um, your upbringing possibly influenced like your like specifically design work, like the creative process, or like what um, like icons you like to use, etc. Yeah. Um, so Hanabusa, my last name, mm. it actually means house of flowers or like bouquet wow. of flowers. And so just through the generations, it's just like symbolisms of like floral elements have always like popped up like left and right. And so I think even in my work, you'll see a lot of those elements. And even um, just digging a little bit deeper, it's like finding the roots mm. of the stories and like let's yeah. tell these authentic impactful stories but let's dig a little bit deeper mm -hmm. you know and um so i've been very passionate about like finding stories and like og activists and people who were doing like dope shit for like ever yeah and like let's bring that to the forefront and like let's tell those stories and let's be able to like bridge generations and bridge uh. cultures and all of that and bring that out in in clothing Yes, I love that. I love how you bring up um, bridging generations because I feel like, I mean, it hasn't even been that long, if you think about it, years-wise, mm -hmm. when um, like Asians started to immigrate to America. Like, I mean, America's history isn't even that long yeah. compared to other countries, right? So it's, I feel like it's so important to, like, I feel like, like when I think about, say, my kids, um, I unfortunately haven't learned Tagalog mm. because my parents are already second generation. Um, they were born here. And so I'm like, oh man, like, how are they gonna know not even just the language, but like the accent that yeah. I grew up hearing, you know? Oh, like, wow. so I was like, oh, I told my mom, I'm like, you have to fake a Filipino accent <laughs> for my kids. Like, I'm not gonna Can you have do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> the accent, you mean? <laughs> Wait, why did I kind of sound English there? Like, I have to like say things as if like my grandma's talking to me, like, Okay, my, okay, we're gonna, confession time. Um, my house, I feel like a lot of Asian Americans have this, but like your household nickname, like my household nickname was Poopy. <laughs> like Pooh Bear. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> Do not even. I um, like, cause I really loved Pooh Bear. And so they'd always call me like, oh, Poopy, you come here. Like, you know, like, yeah. uh, oh my God, I can't even. <laughs> like, I, I have to like have something to say, like, 
Like, if you don't finish your dinner, then you're going to stay there. <laughs> the rest of the night, too bad. <laughs> Oh and God, that is something that. that my grandma has said to me. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like uh, it's, I, I would like even like say like my kids, that next generation, mm -hmm. um, to be able to still know and grow up around these things. But how would we do that in like this new contemporary space where, you know, it's um, a lot of us are, have already grown up here. Yeah. So I think it's great that you're like bridging that into something like fashion, especially because fashion is so, um, I mean, even just clothes are just so essential. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, especially now in these generations, um, in our generation, it's like, we're just so much, we're just very expressive mm -hmm. in terms, and especially when it comes to activism, I feel like people are more open to wearing what they believe in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is something that I always say. Um, it's like what you wear is what you represent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think it's so cool seeing this next generation really being conscious of like where they're buying or like what brands um, they support and whatnot. Right. And they kind of like really dig into like the stories and yeah. like the process of like creation of these products. And right. so I think it's so cool and it just like keeps us accountable, right? To like continue to do good work. Right. Um, and I totally feel you on on like the, the, the generations and whatnot, because I am fourth generation, mm -hmm. but my mom is from Japan. So it was this like really interesting thing of like knowing and speaking the language at home mm -hmm. and I think a lot of like my peers who who were Japanese American or even like my cousins right they don't know a lick of Japanese mm -hmm. but I think I have I've, I had that privilege of being able to experience that yeah um at home and so I hope to also like carry that through yeah for the next generation that would be really yeah I, I that's why I always I always tell my mom or like I actually lived with my grandparents who are the ones that immigrated here um, for most of my life, and I was like, "Why didn't you guys teach me?" Mm. Like, I like and my mom was like, "I do," because she, she was when I was a kid, she was at work or she was in school, and I was like, um, I asked my grandparents, I was like, "Like, Mama, Papa, why didn't you teach me Ilocano or Tagalog?" You know, they're like, "Oh, we were lazy." <laughs> like, they were like, "Hey, they're being honest." Yeah, <laughs> they're being honest. I was like, "Like, oh, it's just so much easier to just talk to you in English." And really? I'm like, "Yeah, but the thing is that it's really funny that like they would speak it to each other, and so growing up, I kind of picked up, but I never was able to speak it. Like, if they were to say something to me, I would kind of I would be able to respond in English, but then like, so yeah, there's like that little connect, but also that disconnect. Yeah, so yeah, feel it you. feels like like if I wanted to learn Tagalog, I'd have to learn it on my own type." deal so it's like whoa <laughs> but yeah I love that you you're able to speak your like native language because I feel like that like really connects you not only to your identity but like to the community mm -hmm. as well because I feel like there's like that different type of connection that intimacy yeah yeah, yeah. so um speaking of Asian Americans <laughs> yes um so unfortunately we are we are hopefully all aware of the events that are going on in our country um, regarding AAPI hate. Uh, how what actions have you and your company uh, taken to stop Asian hate? And what made you want to use your platform to do so? Yeah, um, you know, the start of the pandemic, right? This is like pre-lockdown, mm -hmm. pre, you know, when the whole world decided to shut down, right? Yeah. Um, we already started to see on like our news feed mm -hmm. or just within our community, like starting to see the um, the anti-Asian hate like rhetoric kind of like circulating around. And um, there was up to 80% sales drop for Asian owned small businesses mm -hmm. all across the country. And this is like pre lockdown. Right. Um, and that was due to like xenophobia, that was due to just misinformation that was being circulated around. And so seeing that, um, knowing what Upriser stands for, and then knowing about just all the work that I've been doing internally, I was like, this is not the time for, for me personally to just sit back and mm. watch all of this happen. And, um, you know, we, our team was just a very small group of people, you know, we didn't really have the intentions of like, creating this huge like movement, but uh, we just wanted to do something at that time. And so it actually started off as a food crawl initiative to support oh. just 
um, local restaurants here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, lockdown happened, so right. we couldn't do that anymore. And so the movement Hate is a Virus kind of continued on in the digital space. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, and now a year later, it's become its own nonprofit, um, you know, and I think that I'm, I'm just really, really grateful for the community who have supported us along the way, but also being able to do so many different initiatives to give right. back to community as well. Oh, we love that. I, I actually, um, before I met you today, on my own feed and everything, I always have seen like um, hashtag hate is a virus, right? And so when I found out that your company and you um, coined that, or yeah. I believe it was one of your team members coined the term, right, yeah. or the, the phrase, I was like, whoa, that's crazy because <laughs> I've seen that all over my feed, especially because, you know, the community is really trying to rally, you know, awareness and um, action, mm -hmm. you know. So is there, um, what's it called, is there anything else aside from awareness that you think um, the community and even what your company does, like, what we should do um, to stop Asian hate? Yeah, I, th I think that's a really great question. You know, step one is to continue to raise awareness, mm -hmm. um, but it, it, you, we can't just stop there, right. right? There's like so many different action steps that we need to take. Um, and so even early on with Hate is a Virus, our goal was to not just raise awareness, but also to build out like educational content um, yeah. and to also like, uh, tell folks like why these things are happening right. it's not new it's not like this just happened a year ago mm -hmm. you know these these issues and these incidents have always existed it's just now it's at the forefront um, and then we also wanted to take a further step to continue to fundraise mm -hmm. and there are incredible organizations um, grassroots organizations all across the country that have been doing this work for decades now mm -hmm. and you know oftentimes whether it's like in the middle of America or just folks who are doing on the ground work um, might not, not, not necessarily have a bandwidth or whatnot to continue to promote mm. on social media, yeah. right? Um, to, to bring more awareness around their organization. Right. So our goal is to raise $1 million through our community action fund so that we can not only amplify and uplift the work that they're doing, but we can also give back and so that we can create a sustainable movement, sustainable work um, oh. for years to come. That's so great. I love how you mentioned about sustainable um, just activism. So like uh, I know that especially like even like last year with BLM and um, a lot of people get burnt out um, when trying to spread awareness because then they're having to explain to so many people over and over and over. And like that's why um, I, f I like that you mentioned that because it's a cycle and you have to be able to like have um, – the bandwidth to continue fighting the fight. Right? Mm -hmm. So, totally. yeah. So, I mean, you, you talked about the educational aspect aside from um, the history of what these other organizations are doing. What else would you want people to know about Asian Americans? Yeah. Um, you know, Asian Americans are not a monolith. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, even even AAPI month, right? It's yeah. like really figuring out how we can be inclusive because we're so, so diverse. Yes. Within just like the AAPI mm -hmm. spectrum and um, just really focusing on, on, on continuing to share how diverse, beautiful all of our cultures are and to continue to tell our stories. Yes. Amazing, yeah. And also food. <laughs> food, yes. How can we forget? <laughs> I feel like food is such a... Interest, it's like interestingly such an important staple in the culture. Um, like just, I mean, not in terms of like, oh, just Asian American culture, but I feel like as I've talked to and like met so many different people from different um, Asian backgrounds, like food is just such a big, like especially in the, in the home, like for family and stuff. So I think it's just so interesting how, <laughs> I don't know how this tangent came about. I just love food. <laughs> but like, I love it. it's just, um, it's just interesting how, what's it called? I feel like our, our cultures are like bridged by some common, not qualities, but values, I would say. Like a lot, a lot of values that are just so common. Um, and I think they're just so beautiful mm -hmm. as well. 
And I, I feel like a lot of those qualities also make us strong. And I feel like what's, what makes me sad is when we think we're not strong. You know, I feel like, like, as a people, as a culture, like, even just, even just like, knowing my own Filipino history, my own Filipino culture makes me that much more stronger, you know? And I don't know. I don't know how we got here. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'm happy we're here. I think, I think food is such a great entry point, too, yeah. to also, like, share. Sharing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's where my mind was. <laughs> Michelle is coaching. <laughs> <laughs> no. She's fair enough of but you. list your favorite Asian food in the chat. Thank you very yeah. much. Mine is ramen, period. <laughs> what was it? Ramen or pho? Ramen or pho, yeah. yeah. I love ramen. Ramen is <laughs> so good. Comfort food period <laughs> but let's get into um our intersecting identities um what makes you proud to be a woman yeah i was um thinking about that a lot there's <laughs> a really interesting article i don't know if you've seen it it's mm -hmm. um harvard business review came out with an mm -hmm. article last year um after the after the pandemic and they actually shared statistically, that women are more suited to lead during crisis. Oh. And I thought it was so fascinating. I don't know, I don't, I don't I remember the stats at all, but it was yeah. really, like, they broke it down, like, to the wow. T of, like, all the various different, like, leadership skills and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm, I'll leave it at that. But <laughs> I am very proud to be a female and, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hearing about that, like there are numbers. <laughs> proven. There are proven numbers. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Period. <laughs> so um, next, what makes you proud to be an Asian American? I'm, I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of, you know, all of the perseverance and hard work that like mm. my family have been through so that we can be here today yeah. and like being able to do what I love today mm -hmm. um and so i yeah i in a way i'm almost like making up for the lost time ah i see you yeah. know um, mm -hmm. of my youth but i'm 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 proud to be asian american awesome yeah and i know this sounds redundant but our identities intersect and sometimes that can the definition of that intersecting identity can change um, what, <laughs> what makes you proud to specifically be an Asian American woman? Woo, what makes me proud? Yeah. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> you got it. What is, what is your answer? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, I like this. <laughs> okay. Hmm. What makes me proud to be an Asian American woman? I feel like, I feel like when I ever I think of my identity as an Asian American woman is just everything that's kind of like thrown in my face as to what everyone thinks an Asian American woman is supposed to be like. Mm. And so I feel like um, because of that, especially growing up, I mean, everyone is always expecting us to be, um, what's it called, demure or like. Uh, submissive or quiet, you know, or, um, and I lived my entire life doing the opposite yeah, of that. Yeah, <laughs> so I feel like um, for me as an Asian American woman, I, I love, I'm proud that I can actively every day in my life break those stereotypes and just bring a different view to everyone else that is like me so I love that yeah thank you <laughs> I love that a lot yeah, yeah I think I think it takes a lot of courage and guts to kind of be in this space where like as females as a minority like yeah. we're able to kind of continue to like step up and like push mm -hmm. those boundaries and like you know it's it's not easy yeah no, um, it's not. there's definitely you know <laughs> barriers that we have to overcome but I think like the more you do it the more confident hopefully we are in like yeah doing what we're doing and and we get to just continue to push that narrative yeah exactly I feel like um what's it called it's just Oh, hello. 
okay, <laughs> I was like, a robot. <laughs> um, I, I, my, my train was on the track, and then it was like, <laughs> so, um, you know. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for everything that you've shared with us. I would just like to ask, if, is there anything else you'd like to say to uplift our Asian American community? Yeah. Um, I feel like there's like three things that I like to share um, that I've been sharing um, as of recent. One is to continue to tell your story. Mm. I think it's so important for all of us just to continue to talk about it, whether it's just at the dinner table, whether it's in your, in your inner circle and your friends, or you know, if you have like a platform to, mm -hmm. to share in that way. Um, two, it's really important to continue to center the voices of like community organizers yeah. and organizations that have been doing the work for decades um, and to uplift those voices. Um, and then the third one is to find your community and figure out ways that we can continue to take action every single day. Oh, love that. Thank you so much. Um, everyone, if you haven't seen already, I forgot to mention, but we have Uprisers uh, merch in the shop. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know about that, but that's cool. <laughs> right? Do we not? I, I, I believe we do. <laughs> if we don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, soon, not, I'm in front of the camera this time, not behind it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, thank you so much. Um, check where where can we find you? What are the ads? Um, yeah. the, your website, etc. So everyone can see your merch and where they know to get them. Yeah. Um, so you can find us at weareuprisers.com, on Instagram at weareuprisers, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank we you. We hope you enjoy the rest of the event. We appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Asian Americans! Oh! <laughs>